H370 on my test bench, it's more likely than you think. This is the H370 Performance from ASRock, and this is an i7-8700 non-K. I don't think it's really accurate to say that they're not overclockable. You can certainly run them out of specification and get higher performance. The H370 chipset is limited to DDR4-2666, and the 8700K on the box says it's 3.2 gigahertz, you know, base clock, 4.7 gigahertz boost clock. But as we'll see, we can actually get this 8700 to run at 4.3 gigahertz all core, no problem. We can even push it a little bit further beyond that. It's built in turbo actually for single and dual cores up to 4.7 gigahertz. That's something that Intel doesn't really publish anymore. They don't really publish, well, they said that they're not gonna publish the turbo boost stuff in the future because it varies a little bit from chip to chip and depending on thermals and power usage and that kind of thing. And this is the H370 Performance, which is the non-overclocking chipset that goes with these eighth generation CPUs, at least the highest end uh, non-overclocking chipset. Of course, the, the uh, overclocking version of this is Z370. And so you'd think, oh, well, H370 is just a cut down version of Z370. No, the H370 is actually completely different silicon. The Z370 chipset was really just a revamp of Z270 so Intel could get Coffee Lake out the door. Z390 is gonna be a new chipset that's coming, at least as of the time of this video, that is new silicon and has some of the features that we see on H370 and B360. Namely, enhancements from Intel, the biggest of which is onboard USB 3.1 Gen 2, that's 10 gigabit USB, right from Intel. It's built into the chipset, and that's what this motherboard has built in at the back, one type A and one type C with that USB controller. For the rear IO, it's pretty standard. There are two USB 2.0 ports, which are the you know ASRock Vitality ports, as they call them, which are optimized for USB input devices. We've got a combo PS2 mouse and keyboard port, combination display port, HDMI, and VGA for your video outputs. Two USB 3.0, that's USB 3.1 Gen 1 protocol. Then we've got our Intel Gigabit NIC, which is the i219V. Right below that, we've got two USB 3.1 Gen 2, one type A, one type C, that is provided by an Intel controller. Then we've got our Realtek ALC 1220 based audio codec, which does have an optical SPDIF out, and it looks as though the connectors are gold plated for the audio. And one thing I'll point out about the sound in implementation, it is a Realtek ALC 1220, but it's a Sound Blaster Cinema 5. So if you want the Sound Blaster software, get some perks from that. That's something some people look for. You do get the Sound Blaster Cinema 5 bundle with this motherboard. In terms of board layout, it's pretty standard for an H370 chipset. We've got the one PCI Express by 16, which is wired directly into the CPU. This is the only PCI Express slot here that's wired directly into the CPU. All of the other PCIe slots are to the chipset. So we've got four PCI Express by one slots. They are open-ended, so you could use you know, other cards in them that are more than PCI Express by one, but they're bandwidth will be constrained. And then there's one PCI Express by four slot it's the very bottom slot. It will take a Thunderbolt add-in card, and there is a Thunderbolt header on this motherboard. So this motherboard has five four-pin fan headers, one of which is designated just for a high current water pump or other sort of high current device. There are three M.2 slots, although one of the M.2s, the one that's sort of obscured by the video card, is designed for an M.2 Wi-Fi card. So you can use the CNVI or something like, you know, whatever Wi-Fi card that you might want to add in there for your Wi-Fi. And this is really, I gotta give ASRock kudos here. This is the best possible PCI Express uh, M.2 layout because you've got the one M.2 above the graphics card. It's gonna get plenty of airflow. You've got one M.2 at the very front of the board near the bottom edge. Both of those, if you're running your you know, uh, NVMe, it's gonna have adequate airflow. Now, you don't wanna, with NVMe, it's kinda weird. You don't wanna make your NVMe overly cool, but you also don't want it so hot that it throttles because the flash has to get hot for the writes to take effect, but you don't want it to overheat. So NVMe is sort of an odd critter. At the bottom edge of the motherboard, we've got our front panel audio out, our TPM header, our RS-232 COM1, and our first four pin fan header. We've got an RGB strip headers for both digital and analog 5050 RGB strips, two USB 2.0 headers, two more four pin fan headers, and our front panel connections. At the front edge of the motherboard, we've got two 30 pin USB 3.0, that's USB 3.1 Gen 1, the protocol. We also got six SATA six gigabit per second ports. One of those six ports is gonna be disabled if you use a SATA M.2 device, however, so just beware. At the top edge of the motherboard is our eight pin 
CPU 12 volt power connector. And right next to that is a header for another 5050 RGB LED strip. So you can control that directly from the UEFI. Now the first thing that I notice about this motherboard, now that I've got it out of the box, is that this is using uh, ASRock's four layer, you know, memory Paul technology. So this is like planes on outer layers. So the PCB for this is actually thinner and more flexible than I'm used to seeing on a motherboard. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just sort of a new process technology. So ASRock says that this process technology on this motherboard is more immune to uh, noise and provides better uh, performance between like the memory and the CPU socket. Now on this motherboard, the memory speed because of the chipset and because of the non-overclocked CPUs is limited to 2666. So I'm not too sure what to make of that, but it is an interesting trend if this is going to be a uh, cost saving measure or you know, a performance enhancing measure, or maybe, you know, the Holy Grail is it does both. It's cheaper and actually better. So we'll have to definitely test that and see how that, how that plays out. Now when we're talking about power delivery, it is a 10 phase power delivery system. It's really eight plus two with some phase doublers in there. So it's more than adequate for a non, you know, overclocking CPU. It's, it's more than adequate for a situation where you're not gonna have to deliver 300 watts to one of these CPUs. Most people assume that H370 is totally not overclockable. That's totally not accurate. Intel's basically segmented the overclockability. It's like totally unlocked and somewhat unlocked. And H370 is somewhat locked, somewhat unlocked. They're not totally multiplier unlocked, but you can definitely squeeze a little extra performance out of the 8700. You can also mess around with the memory timings. Even though the memory is limited to 2666, you can totally squeeze a lot more out of that. I'm gonna show you how. We're gonna go from about 29, 30 gigabytes per second on the memory bandwidth, all the way to 40 gigabytes per second, maybe even a little beyond, even keeping the memory speed at 2666. And for our 8700, we're gonna push the boundaries. You know, it's 3.2 gigahertz base clock. Nah, we can get it run at 4.3 all day long. Maybe even a little beyond that. It just depends on what options we've got in our UEFI. Now, one thing I was surprised not to see in the H370 UEFI on this board was multi-core enhancement. Multi-core enhancement is a thing where you're not really pushing past the maximum multiplier on this CPU, which is, you know, 4.6, 4.7 gigahertz, really 4.6, but you still can have some control over that, even though it's not, quote unquote, an overclocking CPU. Strangely, the performance options seem to just be max non-turbo and then max with turbo. Setting max turbo seems to lock in about 4.5 gigahertz for the all-core overclock, which is not the default for the 
uh, you know, the 8700 either. The 8700's built in from Intel, all core overclock, if thermals and power delivery from the motherboard allow it, is 4.3 gigahertz on all cores. Running some benchmarks here for 15, 20 minutes, which should be enough to get past the long and short power duration limits, I was seeing about 4.5 gigahertz sustained. So not having multi-core enhancement control means that you're gonna be somewhat limited on the non-overclocking overclockiness of the motherboard, if that makes sense. But that said, 4.5 gigahertz is plenty, plenty respectable for the H370 chipset. It's all just gonna come down to what you're looking for and, and price, like the price performance ratio. So just know that if you, if you get the CPU and you're like, I'm looking at the 8700 and the 8700K, and it's looking like the 8700 with the base clock of 3.2 is at like a four or 500 megahertz deficit for the 8700K. It's like, well, that's not really true. The performance deficit is more like two or 300 megahertz until you overclock the 8700K and then it, then it probably is more like four or 500 megahertz at the top end. But 100 megahertz from 3.2 to 3.3 translates to more of a real world performance gain than when we're talking about 4.9 gigahertz to five gigahertz, just in terms of raw clock speed. And also we've got the memory bandwidth from about 31 gigabytes per second to about 39 gigabytes per second and the latency down to 45 nanoseconds from 60. So even though you can't move the memory past 2666, it doesn't matter because you can play with the timings and especially those secondary timings and get a lot of performance out of this combination, even though it's not quote unquote overclocking. And whatever you lose in overclockability, you probably gain in stability. So if stability is your game, might be worth considering. Well, there you have it. Under Linux, this board is a pretty solid experience with Linux. Now, a lot of the people that are that are into Linux, you know, they're not really super into overclocking. They don't really want to do a lot of crazy stuff with their machine. They will buy, I know from our Amazon purchase history, because that was affiliate links, which we really appreciate. Thank you. From our Amazon affiliate links, a lot of people are buying the non-K CPUs. And so if you're going to buy a non-K CPU, don't spend extra money on the motherboard. Of course, depending on where you are, it may be cheaper to get a Z370 motherboard instead of an H370 motherboard or something like that. That's kind of weird. Just bear in mind that that Z370 is, is older silicon. You're not gonna get the USB 3.1 Gen 2 from Intel. That's gonna be an Asmedia USB 3.1 Gen 2 controller or maybe Z390. And then that probably is gonna include the Intel, you know, 10 gigabit USB 3.1 Gen 2 connector. So, you know, just depending on your regions and the deals, a lot of times you could see an 8700 bundled with an H370 or a B360 motherboard and you can get a pretty good deal on that. So it's gonna come down to the deal and the performance and, and the particular things that you wanna do. On Linux, you know, Intel, NIC supported. Realtek ALC 1220 codec supported. It is, a, you know, remember it's the Sound Blaster Cinema 5 implementation here, but it's pretty well supported under Linux. All the other PCI Express peripherals, the M.2, that's all fine. USB 2.0, PS2 mouse and keyboard port, totally fine. So this is a really good experience on Linux. It's basically plug and play, which is a nice thing to have if you're building a Linux workstation. And if you're not gonna fool with overclocking, you still get the turbo boost, all that's supported by the Linux kernel. You can install the i7Z package and a little CPU frequency widget for GNOME. If you know, if you, if you swing that way, if you swing the GNOME way, I can know you do, then, uh, you know, it's fine. It's all works pretty well under Linux. So it's nice to be able to say that. There was a time when that wasn't true. So if you end up picking up a system and building something with one of these, share with us on the forums at level one text. Post pictures, you know, tell us what your experiences are, good or bad. We want to know. Forum at level1text.com. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.